This is John from PV Nation. I'm out here at Gateway Paintball Park to show you the brand new Dye M3 Plus. This is the blackout color. Let's go shoot it. This is John here with PV Nation, and I am here to show you the new Dye M3 Plus. We're gonna do a quick unboxing video and hopefully even shoot it some. So, comes in a very similar case to the Dye M3S. Comes with the, the charger. And let's open it up. All right. So right away, see that the barrel backs are the new S style, the new ULS, that's the longer style. This is the blackout version of the M3 Plus. Man, just gorgeous. Die really does a good job aesthetically with their guns. So let's pull off some warning tags. Let's take a look and see. All right, so the eye pipe, definitely different. This is the fourth generation eye pipe, and this is backwards compatible with the M2, uh, with the Rise, with the uh, and M3 uh, S as well, obviously. Let's take a look at the bolt itself. All right, so it's got a new flex face bolt. The can is new as well, and I'm told both with the eye pipe and the bolt that the idea is to make the gun much uh, gentler on paint. Some of these parts, uh, some of the bolt parts are backwards compatible again, uh, and I believe Dai is even working out some sort of deal for people that already own uh, the M3S. So keep track or keep up and we will tell you more about that when we find out. Obviously trigger is different. This is the Billy Wing trigger. And then one of the things people have been looking forward to the most, that ASA. Look at that. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it comes down a little bit and forward. Very cool. We'll obviously do that under pressure and see how that works as well. So several different changes right away. I am told the solenoid housing itself is different. Obviously, I'm not gonna pull that apart right now, uh, but several new changes. Let's go shoot some paint through it. Straight out of the box, not a ball ever shot through it. Let's see, let's air it up. Let's see how the new ASA works. Put it in front of the camera. Snaps right in, real solid. There is absolutely no chance of diving and that coming loose, but here's the real test. Let's see how easy it is to pull it off. Very easy to ungas it. All you have to do is you kind of pull down and forward at the same time. Whoop. Gases, ungasses super easily. No problems, it's a big upgrade. All right, I'm gonna be shooting a couple different kinds of paint today, hopefully. One of the things that people keep asking me about this gun is can it shoot different brittle paint? So we're going to put it to the test. I have some custom paint from GI. It's an orange shell with an orange ball. I also have some pink Ultra Evil left over from the ICC. I have some super brittle paint that is left over from Living Legend. I have a couple different kinds of paint. We're going to try them and see if this gun can shoot it. All right, we kind of rushed through the unboxing just because I wanted to do a shooting video. I'm here at Gateway Paintball Park and it's about to rain, it's nasty, it's wet, looks like a World War II movie out here, but let's shoot the M3 Plus. I've got the LTR hopper on it from Dai and I've got a powerhouse reg on it as well. Let's see how it does. All right, very first shots out of the M3 Plus.
right, you got to see the very first time it was aired up, the very first time a ball came out of it, you got to see it shoot straight right away. Let's shoot it a lot more. All right, we're gonna start off with the M3 Plus on completely stock settings, completely stock trigger. Uh, normally, I would adjust the trigger further back. I don't like it canted quite that far forward, and because of the way they've designed this gun, it's very easy to change. Uh, I also would, wouldn't have it quite this stiff, and most of us don't shoot semi-auto that often. However, let's try all the stock settings, all the stock everything, see if we can still shoot it fast, see if it's accurate, see if it's fun. Pretty quick. Let's do one shot at a time, make sure it's actual semi-auto. I can't even get it to double shoot. All right. So, fun to shoot on semi-auto straight out of the box, but let's adjust a couple of the settings, see if we can dial it in a little faster for my personal tastes. Uh, again, I'm not gonna touch the trigger yet, just gonna touch the semi-auto settings. All right, I took the trigger sensitivity down, and I took the max rate of fire up real fast. Let's see if we can feel a difference at all. Feels a little snappier to me. Let's shoot it a little bit without hitting anything, just so you can hear how the gun sounds. All right, semi-auto is fun on the gun, but most of us play in ramping, so let's put it on NXL ramping. All right, this particular gun will be used on NXL ramping for the most part. So I made profile number two NXL ramping. That way, at any point, I could quickly and easily set it on NXL mode and go play games. It just takes a couple seconds to set up a profile. It takes even less time to select that profile after it's set up. that again. Shooting the hopper all the way dry, absolutely no issues, but ramp kicks in easily, stays in ramp easily with just one finger, just like it should. All right, so the new die slap ASA lives up to its name. If you pull it out this direction, it seems to pop off pretty easily. But putting it back in, I've just found the easiest way. Just smack it. Gas is right up. All right, let's keep the gun in NXL ramping mode for right now. Let's shoot some more of the GI Custom Blend paint. Absolutely no breaks, no chops, no issues whatsoever. Some condensation in and on the barrel and on me from the weather, but it is what it is. Aha. just doesn't feel like any barrel rise that you normally associate with ramping. It's staying very steady for me, which is exactly what you want with any kind of tournament gun. All right, one last hopper of the GI Custom Blend, and then we'll switch over to Ultra Evil and see how the M3 does with some of those brittle paint I have. Uh, it's raining a little bit, so accuracy obviously will not be as high as usual, but we'll see how it does. and that's something I usually try not to do with guns. I try not to shoot it completely dry, but 
wanted to see how the gun was doing and it's absolutely flying i wish i had a billy wing signature series visor right now for to keep the rain off but it is what it is all right so a lot of the improvements for the m3 plus involve being able to shoot more brittle paint it also involves being able to shoot smaller paint so i'm gonna do two tests real fast one i'm going to shoot some of the most brittle paint i have but it's not just brittle i left it outside overnight so it just broke on everything it almost one ball broke in the hopper a little bit so i pulled that one out cleaned it up that's just loading it so let's see if the gun can shoot it and then after that i'm going to take the smallest paint i have and we're going to shoot the smallest paint and see if that'll go through the gun if it survives those two tests then die achieved what they were trying to do this is the brittle ultra evil paint that got left outside first Not a single ball break, no issues. The gun definitely feels more gentle on paint. Plain. So it passed the test with brittle paint. Now let's see how it does with super small paint. I'm not gonna call out the manufacturer. It's not GI paint this time. This is somebody else's paint, but this is incredibly small. This was flying through uh, a 7.5 back, just falling right through it. So barrel back obviously is not made for paint near this small. Let's see if the gun can do it though. So far so good, no issues. Not a single break. No, no problems whatsoever, it can do it. So the M3 Plus is definitely living up to the buzz. It's definitely living up to what they said it could do. And let's face it, it's a beautiful looking gun. All right, I left a whole bag of Ultra Evil outside overnight. So I'm gonna shoot some more of it now. And it is the most brittle paint I have far and away. It is probably not going to be the most accurate paint because you honestly shouldn't leave paint like this out overnight. Again, shooting the hopper completely dry. Fantastic. shooting it just into the trees so you can hear the gun shoot. And the hopper's almost empty. Still shooting absolutely fantastic. So I'm cycling through different paint. I have some old Living Legends paint that's real brittle. We're gonna shoot that. And I took the gun up to 15 balls a second just to give you some old school NXL feel. Let's see if the M3 Plus can keep up. And let's see if it kicks into ramp now. This is in 15 balls a second still. shot beautifully hasn't broken a ball let's take it up to the rate of fire up even higher and put it on full auto mode just to give you one last look at the m3 plus 
I cranked the M3 Plus up to 20 balls a second in full auto. Let's see what that looks like. Hilarious. All right, with the M3 Plus, they set out to do one main thing, and that is make the gun much more gentle on paint. They seem to have succeeded in every way, shape, and form. The gun feels smoother. It shoulders well. I like the slightly longer barrel. The new eye pipe seems to be doing exactly what it's supposed to. Overall, the M3 Plus is a great gun. Looking forward to shooting it a lot more.